When using the trapezoid rule to approximate a definite integral, there will be an error in most cases. However, as n increases, the error will also decrease. So for this example, we want to know how large should n be to guarantee that the trapezoid rule approximation of the given definite integral is accurate within 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. To answer this question, we'll be using the error bounds formula for the trapezoid rule given here below. Well, the error is less than or equal to the quantity b minus a cubed, where a and b are the limits of integration, divided by 12n squared times the absolute value of the maximum function value of the second derivative function on the closed interval from a to b. So there's really two steps to this problem. We'll first have to find this maximum function value on the closed interval and then solve this inequality for n. So let's begin to set this up. Looking at the right side of this inequality, we would have the quantity b minus a cubed, where a is negative two and b is one. So we would have one minus negative two to the third divided by 12 n squared times the absolute value of the maximum function value of the second derivative function, and in our case, on the closed interval from negative two to positive one. If we want this to be accurate within one-tenth, so we want this to be less than or equal to one-tenth. So now we'll go to the next slide and work on finding this maximum function value on this closed interval. So our function is the integrand function, so f of x equals negative x to the fourth minus two x to the third plus twelve x squared plus two x minus five. Of course, before we find the second derivative, we must find the first derivative. So f prime of x would be negative four x to the third minus six x squared plus twenty-four x plus two minus zero. So our second derivative function would be negative twelve x squared minus twelve x plus twenty-four plus zero. Remember our goal here is to find the maximum function value of this function on the closed interval from negative two to positive one. There's a couple ways of doing this. We could analyze the graph of this function. Notice how it's a quadratic function where a is negative, so it's a parabola that opens down, and therefore the y coordinate of the vertex would be our maximum function value as long as it's in this closed interval. But we could also use calculus techniques by finding the critical numbers of this function, which would be where the derivative of this function or the third derivative would be equal to zero or undefined. Then we'd evaluate the second derivative function here at the critical numbers as well as at the endpoints. So let's go ahead and use calculus techniques first and then we'll verify our work graphically. So the third derivative function would be negative twenty-four x minus twelve. This is never undefined, so let's go ahead and set it equal to zero and solve for x. We would add twelve to both sides, divide by negative twenty-four, that would give us x equals negative one-half. Now that we have our critical number, we're going to evaluate the second derivative function, this function here, at the endpoints and the critical number. So we'd have f double prime of negative two, f double prime of negative one-half, and f double prime of positive one. To save some time, I've already determined these function values. f double prime of negative two would be zero, f double prime of negative one-half is twenty-seven, and f double prime of one is also zero. So the maximum function value that we're looking for is twenty-seven. Let's go ahead and verify this graphically. Here's the graph of the second derivative function on the closed interval from negative two to positive one. Notice at the endpoints, the function value is zero, and then at x equals negative one-half, we do have our vertex, and notice how the y-coordinate or the function value is positive twenty-seven. So this does verify our work. So now going back to the first slide, we will replace this maximum function value with twenty-seven and then solve for n. 
So this would be 3 cubed, that's 27, divided by 12n squared times 27 is less than or equal to 1 tenth. Well, 27 times 27 is equal to 729. So we'd have 729 divided by 12n squared is less than or equal to 1 tenth. Now the fraction of 729 over 12 does simplify to 243 over 4. So our denominator would now be 4n squared less than or equal to 1 tenth. Now let's go ahead and clear the fractions from this inequality. One way to do this would be to multiply both sides of the equation by 4n squared. This would clear the denominator from this side. Let's also multiply both sides by 10, which would clear the denominator in this side. So again, notice how here 10 over 10 simplifies out, and here 4n squared over 4n squared simplifies out, leaving us with 2,430 is less than or equal to 4n squared. Dividing both sides by four, we'd have n squared is greater than or equal to 607.5. We know n has to be positive, so now we'll take the principal square root of both sides of the equation. We'll have to get a decimal approximation here. We would have n is greater than or equal to approximately 24.65. If we want, we can say n is approximately greater than or equal to 24.65 by reversing the order of the inequality. Remember, n is the number of subintervals or the number of trapezoids, and therefore we know it has to be a counting number or natural number, so we'd have to round this up to 25. So to answer the question, n must be equal to 25 to guarantee that the error will be within one-tenth. I hope you found this explanation helpful.